If you're planning to visit Washington, D.C. during cherry blossom season, this video is your guide to have a great time. Hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, you will find videos where I try to share my best tips, tricks, and travel hacks for visitors who want to explore Washington, D.C. I also host the Trip Hacks DC podcast, and the most recent episode, number 57, is my ultimate guide to all things cherry blossom season in D.C. So after you finish watching this video, if you want even more cherry blossom tips, check out the description where I will leave a link where you can listen. First, let's run through some cherry blossom terminology so we're all on the same page. Cherry blossom season refers to the approximately one month period every spring when the cherry blossoms in DC could bloom. Peak bloom is defined specifically as the date when 70% of the Yoshino cherry trees on the Tidal Basin are open. If you've ever seen a photo of the Tidal Basin that looks like this, it was taken during peak bloom. The National Cherry Blossom Festival is both the actual festival that you can attend every March and April and the name of the 501c3 nonprofit organization that is responsible for executing this festival. The National Cherry Blossom Festival is currently a multi-week event that starts on March 20th, the first day of spring, and runs for several weeks after that. This year, in 2024, it's a 25-day festival that will end on April 14th. Now, let's talk about the bloom and set some realistic expectations. Cherry blossoms are delicate flowers and typically only in bloom for about one week. If we get lucky and there's an extended period of nice, calm weather, they can last for up to 10 to 14 days. But realistically, I personally tend to expect them to fall after seven to 10 days. The bloom is notoriously difficult to time and depends heavily on weather conditions in early March and mid-March. Basically, cooler temperatures during this time mean a later bloom and warmer temperatures an early bloom. Every year on approximately March 1st, an initial prediction is made and that date is spread all across traditional media and social media. Take these early predictions with a huge grain of salt. If you go on the official Bloomwatch website, it says forecasting peak bloom is almost impossible more than 10 days in advance. This year, that initial prediction was for a bloom 24 days in advance. And 24 is obviously a lot greater than 10 they will adjust that prediction as we move through March. It might stay the same or it might change. Please do not make your travel plans based only on that initial prediction. That's one way to create unrealistic expectations and a potential disappointment. Keep in mind that there are about a dozen different varieties of cherry trees in Washington, D.C. Peak bloom is based strictly on the Yoshino variety, but there are some that bloom earlier and some that bloom later. Even if you miss the famous peak bloom, you are almost certain to see something in bloom. If you come really early, the magnolias are not cherry blossoms, but they're still fantastic, beautiful flowers. And if you come late, the Kwanzins, which are the cherry blossoms behind me, typically bloom about two weeks later than the Yoshinos. Bottom line, my advice is this. Don't try to time the blossoms. Come when you can come. And if you get lucky and catch a peak bloom, amazing. As long as you come during cherry blossom season, which roughly lines up with the dates of the National Cherry Blossom Festival, there will be something for you. Speaking of the National Cherry Blossom Festival, let's talk about this event and how you can best experience it. The festival does a ton of great programming, which I typically break down into three categories. Signature events are the big events that draw big crowds. 
Smaller events can be really quite cool, even if lesser known. And multi-week programming typically does not happen on a single date, but happens throughout the entirety of the festival. Signature events are big events held on the weekends. I'll run through some of these very quickly, but remember, if you want a more in-depth discussion on this topic, check out that podcast episode I mentioned and I will link to in the description. First, we have the opening ceremony, which is a free stage play celebrating spring and the blossoms. It features performers from both the US and Japan. Then we have the Pink Tie Party, which is another sort of kickoff event. Pink Tie is a play on black tie, and this one is not free or cheap. It's a fundraiser, a way for the Cherry Blossom Festival to raise money to put on many of the free events. Next, we have the Blossom Kite Festival, which is held at the Washington Monument. It has activities, music, competitions, all themed around kite flying. The National Cherry Blossom Parade is a celebration of spring with balloons, floats, marching bands, and celebrity entertainers. And it's personally my favorite parade in DC. Petal Palooza is a big neighborhood festival to celebrate spring and the blossoms. And weather permitting, it usually concludes with a fireworks display over the water. Sakura Matsuri is a Japanese street festival held near the US Capitol. It's a festival of Japanese food, culture, and art. There are two race events typically held back to back on Saturday and Sunday. The Cherry Blossom 5K is a modest course that usually runs between the White House and Capitol on Pennsylvania Avenue. Then the next day is the Cherry Blossom 10 Mile Race, which is held near the Tidal Basin and East Potomac Park. Finally, the Tidal Basin welcome area and main stage is set up near the FDR and MLK memorials. It features performances of all kinds, plus food and a beer garden. So those are the signature events, but there are smaller events held nearly every single day during the festival. The official website, nationalcherryblossomfestival.org, is a great resource for finding these smaller events. If you navigate to the All Events page, you can use filters enter your trip dates and see all the events, big and small, that are happening while you're here. Let's talk about travel logistics for everyone who's coming from out of town. First, to set expectations. If you come during cherry blossom season, it's going to be expensive and it's going to be crowded. Spring break and summer break are peak tourism seasons in DC. The big difference is that spring break is usually packed into only a few weeks, whereas summer break is spaced out over a couple of months. If you're on a budget, you can come to Washington DC during one of the low seasons and save some money. But if you want to come during cherry blossom season, the cost is going to reflect that demand. If you can swing it, choose a hotel within walking distance of as much as you want to do. Transportation is a serious challenge during cherry blossom season. So the more that you can get around on foot and not have to worry about transportation, the better your experience will be. If you're feeling overwhelmed with picking a hotel, I have a hotels guide over at triphexdc.com hotels and a podcast episode where I discuss in great detail all of the areas that I recommend. On the topic of transportation, let's talk about getting around. Like I said, the best way to get around during cherry blossom season is on foot. And the second best way is on metro. Taxi, Uber, and circulator bus are all theoretically options, but they all suffer from the same flaw, which is that they get stuck in traffic. In addition to standard gridlock, Remember that during cherry blossom season, there are often a lot of road closures and detours. There are road closures around the Tidal Basin welcome area. There are road closures for the parade. There are road closures for the races. Any vehicle that goes in regular traffic can be dicey. 
But the absolute worst way of trying to get around is driving in your own car. I strongly believe that tourists should not be driving in Washington, D.C. any month of the year. But during cherry blossom season, it's going to be a very bad time. So please, don't drive, don't drive, don't drive. Trust me, in 2023, the weekend of peak bloom was an absolute traffic apocalypse because far too many people do not listen to this advice and think you can just drive right in. And spoiler, they could not. The most famous place to see cherry blossoms, of course, is the Tidal Basin. And last year, I made an entire video guide with tips for coming to see the blossoms at the Tidal Basin. And while this is the most famous spot to see blossoms, it's hardly the only spot. My personal favorite place to see the blossoms is East Potomac Park which has a huge concentration of cherry blossoms and typically much smaller crowds than the Tidal Basin. The National Arboretum is a bit off the beaten path and essentially a big outdoor museum of trees. So of course they're going to have some very nice blossoms. They also have the National Bonsai Museum, which is very cool. There's a big concentration of cherry blossoms right around the Washington Monument, which is technically not on the Tidal Basin, but still relatively close. And in general, there are cherry blossoms scattered all over Washington, D.C., both in touristy places and in non-touristy places. So as you're out exploring, enjoy the blossoms that you stumble upon. Now, let's address perhaps the most important question of them all. Is it worth it? I personally believe that seeing Washington DC during spring when the blossoms are in bloom is absolutely worth doing. It's kind of a bucket list experience. That said, it's going to be crowded. You're coming during peak tourist season. So if you prefer to travel during the low season and seeing cherry blossoms is not a bucket list item for you, then perhaps you can come another time. But if you made it this far, let's be honest, you're probably planning to come during cherry blossom season. So next, I highly recommend watching my Tidal Basin Tips video, which you can do by going ahead and clicking or tapping right over here. Enjoy the blossoms.